Hello, hello, Dr. Stein here at Straight Ahead Chiropractic. Hey, we're going to do a webinar today specifically geared toward um, tension, stress, and how that influences behavior and how behavior can be addressed. The reason I want to do this is because we get asked every day uh, if we can, um, if we have any kind of attitude adjustment. And I get it, it's kind of a funny play on words. Um, but parents come in and they're like, hey, is there anything you can do, uh, like an attitude adjustment, to be able to help my kid uh, manage their behavior a little bit better, maybe regulate a little bit better, maybe calm themselves down a little bit better, or just not be so stressed out or so wound up or so tense and tight all the time? And the answer to that is yes and no. And what I mean by yes and no is there's no specific one and done magic pill adjustment. That doesn't work for anything. Chiropractic isn't really about just helping people feel better. Ultimately, it's about helping people heal better. And what I mean by that is the body's natural process or the way the body is designed is that we are self-healing and self-regulating. Kids should be able to overcome sickness without intervention, and they should be able to regulate their moods and behaviors. So regulation is things like sleep patterns, mood, digestion, respiration. All of those types of things are automatic processes, or we call them autonomic processes neurologically, that um, should take place or happen without excessive amounts of effort or energy. It should be easy. And if it's not easy, then that could lead to dis-ease or a lack of ease in the natural process. So with that said, uh, we're gonna go ahead and dive into this webinar. I'm gonna share my screen so that we can go through these slides together and we will we'll get rocking and rolling. All right, so here we go. Attitude adjustment. Um, picture of a little girl here, obviously looks um, determined to do something. I'm not exactly sure what she's determined for, but she's pretty determined. Um, want to give you a little bit of information about me and see where this is not happening. There we go. All right, so a little bit of information about me. I am the CEO of Straight Ahead Chiropractic. Uh, I'm former director of pediatrics at Southern California University of Health Science. That's a mouthful to say. Um, but basically what I did there was I oversaw all things pediatrics, including we had a, a pediatric care where we offered free, um, free care to kids, uh, really all kids under the age of 12, with a primary emphasis on special needs and sensory issues. I'm a husband. I'm a daddy of four. There's my crew. So... Why talk about attitude? Well, I talked about this a little bit ago. I said, um, why do we talk about attitude? Simply because at our office, people are asking about it every day. And it is among uh, one of the top challenges that we see on a daily basis. So little D story. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, as all things would pan out, yesterday they came into the office, him and his mom came into the office and his mom, his mom had said, hey, on the way here, um, which earlier, let me back up, earlier in the day, they had a 504 uh, meeting and they just talked about his progress and how far he's come. Uh, this little guy has been diagnosed with oppositional defiance disorder, ODD, and if you don't know what that is, just think of somebody arguing with you nonstop. And it's clinical. So it's not just somebody that's argumentative, it's just pushback. It's you say yes, they say no. You say up, they say down. You say white, they say black. It's everything is, is in opposition. And with that is a lot of stress, a lot of tension, and a lot of other uh, alphabet soup types of things, a lot of other labels, a lot of other, a lot of other diagnoses um, to where the kiddo is just stuck in stress. And this webinar is not about him, but it's about kids like him. And so they had the 504 meeting and they talked about how much progress that he's made. Uh, interestingly enough, the clinical psychologist in that meeting or the school psychologist in that meeting even um, gave us a shout out and said, hey, have you ever thought about chiropractic care? And the, the mom that said, actually, we go see Dr. Stein and the psychologist said, awesome, that's who I was going to say. You might want to look into. Um, that was a side note. So on the way to the office for, for, this, uh, for, for D's adjustment, he says, mommy, do I need to go to the chiropractor? I'm not angry anymore. Angry is like, maybe not the best term to describe him, um, but it's a really good term to describe him. He was just like a ball of fire and incredibly smart when we first met him a couple years ago. His mom turns to him and without missing a beat, she was like, honey, we're going to the chiropractor 
because you don't have any, you're not angry anymore. And what she meant by that was, we're not going to stop going to the chiropractor because the reason you're where you're at today is largely because of the care that we've received with other specialties and other people as well. Um, but that persistence over time um, in really regulating the nervous system and pulling the tension out of it has, has made uh, quite a bit of impact on him. So I just wanted to share that little story there. Um, but first, what are parents saying? Here's just a couple of examples. I shared that one of D. Um, here are these are progress forms that we get. We take these progress reforms, uh, progress forms uh, periodically, consistently, really throughout care. Every so many visits, patients will fill these out because we want to track progress. We don't want to just uh, um, guess at how they're doing. And so way less sickness, stronger immune system, self-control has improved, happier kids, sleeps better, wakes up rested. And then another one says less temper tantrums, less impulsivity, less anger. And so what you don't see is here's only two examples. We have hundreds and hundreds of these. We actually have a whole notebook in our office just full of these progress forms where it's not us saying it. It's not us saying, hey, because I mean, obviously we're biased in what we do, but it's, it's these parents that are giving us feedback saying, hey, we're seeing these things. We're seeing sleep better, emotional stress is better. They're more flexible. They're more mobile. Family life has improved. And that's where, for me, honestly, as a dad and as a husband, that's probably my favorite thing that we see change is that as these kids become more regulated, their whole family dynamic shifts. Their whole family dynamic gets better. We see kiddos that are, um, are somewhat of a threat to other family members. That We have kiddos that come in the office that when they first start coming in the office, they're a threat to their siblings. Like parents have to lock up butter knives because they don't, they, they can't trust that their kid's not going to do something, right? And it's not that these kids are just naturally um, vicious toward others. It's just that they're so stressed out and they have so many regulation issues that, that they're just having to sort through and, and work through that. And so with that said, uh, I just wanted to share a couple of things to show, like these are, are these two cases in particular, are not, they weren't under any other services or, or seeking any other care. We work really well. There are multiple other professionals that we work with from pediatricians that refer to us to OTs, to PTs, to speech and language pathologists and therapists. Um, the list goes on and on and on. And we work really well with them. We have good rapport with them. And if chiropractic is not the best option for your family, we will absolutely make a referral to where we feel your best fit is. I just shared these examples because these weren't other therapies. This was just, this was all chiropractic in these cases right here that I share. So chiropractic has this primary premise. The primary premise is that the body is self-healing and self-regulating, period. That a body should be healthy. Health is the norm. Now, sadly, 54% of kids in the United States have some kind of chronic disease or illness. And one in six kids have a neurodevelopmental disease, you know, like neurodevelopmental um, or neurodevelopmental disorder. Um, what is a neuro, neurodevelopmental disorder? Well, it is ADHD, autism, um, sensory processing disorder. Those are neurodevelopmental types of things. Then we throw into the mix um, other issues or, or concerns that are on the rise, diabetes, asthma, ear infections, uh, constipation. These are all things we see in the office. Now, point number two here is chiropractic doesn't treat these things. We care for people. That sounds like a play on words and it's a little bit of a game of semantics. I get it. But what I mean by that is we are not so interested in just looking at the symptoms and trying to get the symptoms to go away. We're more interested in saying, well, why are the symptoms there in the first place? What's causing this? Yes, you can get a kid to calm down by drugging them, right? And sometimes that's necessary. And I'm not pushing against um, I'm not pushing against medicine or medical doctors. We work, like I said, we work really well with them. But <clears throat> if you give anybody enough drugs, you can you can change their behavior and their mood. But it's not doing anything to actually fix them. It's not doing anything to actually uh, make them healthier or well. It's just managing the output of their behavior we want to look and say, is there a way that we can actually get to the root cause of that? That's why we are intentional to say that's chiropractic care or health care, because we think that health care should, should begin with caring about your health, not treating disease or illness. So we're a very proactive approach versus a reactive approach. There's two basic pathways with regard to health care and two basic pathways when it, when, it, when it comes to kids with chronic illnesses or neurodevelopmental things. 
you can be proactive and say, well, a couple things. We think we see some stuff that we want to get um, a hold of right away, or we don't really see anything right now. We want to keep it that way. That would be a proactive approach. Sooner, earlier in intervention, um, soon, early intervention is the best form of intervention possible if it's necessary versus the reactive. Well, let's just write it out. Let's see how this goes. Let's maybe, maybe it will just get better on its own. Here's what I want to say, and this is what we're pushing hard against because the science and neurology supports it. Kids don't outgrow this stuff. So a kid with a, a, a baby with colic often turns into a kid that has excessive impulsive, excessive impulsive behaviors. And that kid, that toddler with impulsive behaviors tends to turn into a younger child or even a teenager with ADHD. We see it consistently across the board. Uh, when we do intakes on teenagers that have focus and attention issues, their histories almost always say things like pregnancy, traumatic pregnancy, something went wrong in labor and delivery. They were a colicky baby. They were a gassy baby. Um, they had excessive meltdowns and tantrums, and now they have trouble focusing. There's this cascade. It doesn't go away, and they don't outgrow it. It just morphs or changes into something else, and we call that neuroplasticity. So why chiropractic? How or why might someone, especially a kid, need chiropractic care? Well, here's what we want to look at. We want to look at some common concerns, some common culprits, and some common causes. Some of the common concerns. What are so many families in our office seeking care for? Here's a list, okay? This is not an exhaustive list. If I were to do an exhaustive list, all we would be doing for the next 40 minutes would be talking about some of the things that people come into the office with. But here are some of the things that not only do they bring their kids in with, but they quote unquote leave without. And what I mean by that is not one, vi one visit, it's not a one and done, but here is where we often see kids come in and this is what their intake form looks like. Like this would be one child's intake form. It's all of these things, all these boxes check or fill in the blank of all of these things. And then you saw what the progress form look like, right? They're less irritable. They can regulate their mood. They're sleeping better. There's not as many meltdowns, haven't had sensory issues. All of these things, right? Spatial awareness improves, body control, motor control, all of these things that we'll see improve. And we're gonna to explain to you how and why that is. So what is it that straight at, at straight ahead chiropractic, what is it that we specifically look for? What are some of the common culprits? Well, there's two main ones, spinal tension and neural compromise. Spinal tension leads to neural compromise. There are plenty of studies that I will post and I will share here uh, that show that tension in the spine changes the way our brain perceives the environment. It actually changes the way we function in and, and shapes our reality. So, Here's a little flow chart diagram. These are, there's gonna be a, a series of D words. Um, if you don't know by now, I like alliteration. And so there are a lot of words that start with the same letter and I think it's easier to remember. And these are big words. So spinal tension, disarticulation, something often in the birthing process causes this cascade of tension um, to build up in the spine where there's an imbalance or there is the misalignment in the spine. There's all, that leads to dyskinesia. Dyskinesia is altered movement. So think of something that is misaligned. Think of a door that's hung crooked. It's not going to close well, right? If a door is hung crooked or misaligned, the hinges are going to wear out and it's just not going to move very well. Well, then that leads to dystonia, which is tight muscles. The muscles respond based on the altered movement pattern. So you have a misalignment causing an inadequate or um, an altered movement pattern or a less than desirable movement, right? So Misalignment, if you can see me here on the screen, misalignment of the neck means that you get rigid and you can't move as well. Well, then the muscles tighten in, in response to that, and that leads to a neural compromise. The disafferentation. Now, our body is constantly perceiving the information from, from the environment, and so there are two pathways that we talk about neurologically. There's afferent and efferent, and afferent is information coming from our senses into our brain, that's afferent information. And efferent information is that exiting our brain and going out to our body. So our brain actually isn't a generator that creates or causes things. It's actually more like a transponder. It responds to the various stimuli that it's brought to it. And so what our brain does best is it makes accommodations or 
adaptation. And that's a big word in chiropractic that we talk about a lot because the main way the chiropractic works is we help the body better adapt to its environment. And so disafferentation means that because of that tension in the spine, the messages or impulses that are coming afferently from our extremities and from our body into our brain are not being brought in there as efficiently as possible. And so that causes some mixed signals and that leads to less efficiency. So just think of if your body's not able to tell up from, up from down, right? Let's talk vertigo. If you're not able to be able to differentiate between up or down, it changes your efficiency, right? The way that you move about in space is going to be altered and it's not going to be as efficient as possible. All of that requires a lot of extra energy to do basic tasks, right? So something like being able to sit still in a chair or to be able to walk or to have personal space, all of those things um, should be easy and effortless and your body should do them efficiently unless there's dysfunction and then everything becomes more effort. And then dysautonomia, uh, dysautonomia. When that happens, it throws the nervous system into a tailspin. That tailspin we call dysautonomia and that dysautonomia leads to poor regulation. The way that works is sympathetic dominance. So I said that regulation happens through automatic or actually I said autonomic processes. There's two main divisions in the autonomic nervous system. There's the sympathetic and there's the, there's the parasympathetic. You know them, you've, he you've heard of them probably just in different terms. Your fight or flight response, your adrenaline rush, that's sympathetic. Now, think of that system staying stuck on. Think of having that fight or flight mechanism just go, 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 go. It looks like a stressed out kid that's having a lot of meltdowns. You know why? Because it is a stressed out kid that's having a lot of meltdowns. That's exactly what's going on with their neurology. It's that fight or flight. The other way to look at it is it's survival mode. If they're not able to interpret their environment well, their brain freaks out because they don't feel safe. And when they don't feel safe, they go into survival mode. So what is the most natural survival mode? It's two things. It's withdrawal or flexion going into like the fetal position. Think of like a really stressful uh, situation or a big scare curling up into a ball like in the fetal position um, or it's lashing out. It's the fight or flight or freeze this is the other, way, uh, the other way of looking at it. You have to make decisions on all contexts when you're stuck in this. Everything you, everything you process in your environment when you're stuck in sympathetic dominance, you have to make a decision. Do I fight against it or do I run from it or do I just freeze and do nothing, right? And um, that probably resonates with some of, you, some of you that are listening to this that have a kiddo that's stuck in that dominance. Think of it like this, stuck in stress, okay? Spinal tension, which we call subluxation, causes our sympathetic nervous system to be engaged, which means that we become stuck in stress. That cycle of stress is just go, 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 go. It's a pattern that repeats itself. Here's some cool research. Um, some of this research out of the, the um, New Zealand College of Chiropractic, they found that spinal tension leads to neural compromise. We call this vertebral subluxation. And it's more than just bones. People, when they think chiropractic, they think bones. And I want you to get that out of your head because that is, bones might just be a gateway to do what we really do, but chiropractic is not about bones. Chiropractic is about the brain. Chiropractic 100% is about neurology and restoring the brain's ability to respond and adapt. And what's really cool about this um, is that adjusting the subluxated spine creates um, changes in brain function. What it really says is that adjusting the spine changes brain function by almost 20%, posit, uh, possibly in the prefrontal cortex. So what that means is an adjustment, which we don't really offer an adjustment because like I said before, there's no magic bullet. There's no one and done in chiropractic. It, it takes a process to get this tension built up in the system and it's a process to unwind and unravel it. Think of, think of it like that. A nervous system that's tied in knots, like a ball of yarn, you don't just go through and pull on one string and all of a sudden, boom, it, it, the tension and knot is gone and gone forever. You have to go through that process of unraveling, unwinding, and really breaking that bondage so that you can create um, better pathways or think of brushing hair, tangled, knotty hair. Um, I have a couple of daughters. Well, I got a couple of sons too, but I don't really do their hair. Um, I have a couple of daughters that I have in, in the past or even frequently have uh, um, more recently have done their hair. And if they have knots in their hair, you don't just one and done with the brush, right? It's picking at it, picking at it, picking at it until finally you can create 
a better pathway for the brush to travel. That's exactly what chiropractic does in the nervous system. It's like brushing out the tangles. And significantly, the prefrontal cortex is where executive function happens. That's where our body can actually regulate and rationalize the environment. If that is not being engaged appropriately, then you can't expect rationality to happen. Like you literally can't expect rationality to happen neurologically. That's not an excuse for these kids because I will say kids are kids, sinners are sinners, and they don't need to be taught how to say no or to try and break rules or push boundaries. That's something that instinctively they have already in their nature. But what I want to say is that the excessive amounts of that may be something that they really can't control because their nervous system, right, their brain is driving them that way because it's not understanding the environment well. Hopefully you're still with me here. So what are some of the main causes? I just threw up a few of them. There are hundreds, but here are some of the main causes. Stressful pregnancy, complications in pregnancy, induction, pitocin, breach, intervention, C-section, toxicity, epidurals, back labor, slow labor, fast labor, postural issues, intrauterine constraints, tethered oral tissues or tongue or lip ties, Think of that as stress, right? Why did I put specifically put these up here? Or why did I, where did I even get these from? These are what our intake forms say constantly, right? When we see kiddos that have behavioral issues, it's not normally just one of these, normally it's multiple. And that's what I wanna say is stress is cumulative. People often say, why would you take your kid to a chiropractor? Or what is it that you work on? Or how would this even happen in the first place? I love those questions because I'm inquisitive and we wanna to get to the root cause of issues. But we also want to say it's cumulative. It's not, it's rarely ever just one thing. It's there was um, financial troubles during pregnancy. Then you found out the baby was breech. And then the baby became, was no longer breech anymore. And you had a, a vaginal birth, but then the heart rate dropped and you had to do a C-section. And then baby came out and had, you know, some meconium in and had to spend a couple of days in the ICU. And then you look at this and babies ultimately mostly healthy, right? You survive those things and, and God is good and gracious and, and good things happen in the fact that everything appears to be normal until it's not anymore. And what I mean by that is things seem to be okay, but then when you look back and we have these conversations, people are like, yeah, as a matter of fact, they were really colicky, but I just didn't know because it was my first kid. I didn't know what normal was. Here's what normal is. Babies cry, and there's generally a reason for it. They're hungry, they, um, they're tired, or they need a diaper change. Those are the main reasons babies cry. If they're crying for other causes, then you need to find out what those other causes are. And you just know that stress is cumulative. So some cool research. This is hot off the press. This is August of this year. We're not pulling research from 1992. This is straight up a couple months ago. Recent findings in the field of neurobiology have elicited that the nervous system development and brain growth may be linked with movement and sensory input. Here's what's really cool. Findings suggest mobility restrictions or insufficient sensory stimuli impact the productivity of new brain cells and brain development. What does that mean? A neck that's stuck and not moving is going to hinder the brain's ability to develop and grow. That is awesome and scary all at the same time. So, the first thousand days is actually the most important, the most crucial time. When should you get your kid checked? Day one. That absolutely, the sooner you get them checked, the best. The window of opportunity where it's best to have the greatest amount of impact on them, the first thousand days, because those first thousand days are the most crucial pivotal points and times where the growth neurologically happens the fastest and it sets the stage and foundation for patterns in the future of how they continue to grow and develop. There are seven stages of neurodevelopment. I'm not going to dive into those, but you need to know the first one is neurogenesis. Makes sense, genesis in the beginning, right? Neurogenesis just means it is the beginning formation. It's the formation of new cells. Now, what can in, in, interfere with that? Well, if you look up in the paragraph above, mobility restrictions. What's a mobility restriction? It's a kink in your neck. It is a subluxation. But what we also know is that there's a trick, there's a trickle or a ripple effect. And what we mean by that is that um, part affects the whole. And so what we mean is that one influence, influencing that first stage, right? If your brain is not developing new brain cells appropriately, 
then it's not going to do much of any good in the other areas of development. So synaptogenesis is how your brain communicates, how the cells of the brain communicate with one another so that you can conduct life and, lively, and livelihood. Well, if there's not new good brain cells, then it doesn't matter if they talk to each other or not, because if they're not there, they're not there. And we don't outgrow this stuff. I always like to say this, and like I, I think I mentioned earlier, we push against this, is that uh, we push against this notion that kids will outgrow these things, and they don't. Um, it's just, I'll, I'll be really honest, I hate saying that because I don't want to have this doom or gloom type of opinion, but I, I feel like we have to speak the truth into these situations and say that while the intention is often good to say they'll outgrow it, that is just bad science and it's ignorance, to be quite honest with you. And I don't know if it's said just so that people will feel better, like pat you on the back and go, don't worry, they're going to outgrow it. But neurologically, we're constantly adapting and responding to our environment. And they may adapt and overcome. We can adapt and overcome a lot of obstacles and a lot of struggles. But when it comes to neurogenesis and the development of neurobiology or neurophysiology, it transitions into something else. So this becomes this becomes this. And if the foundation is wobbly, you can still build a house. It's just not going to be solid and it's not going to last. So movement maintains forebrain, forebrain neurogenesis. What's that mean? Movement is food for your brain, right? And you've probably experienced that on multiple fronts. From a positive standpoint, you've had a little bit of a stressful day. You go to the gym, you work out. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, I have clarity of mind. I can think better. I'm not as frustrated or upset as I used to be. Or from a negative standpoint, you're just overwhelmed and overloaded, and you're like, ah, right? What are you doing? You're tightening all the muscles in your body and even your vocal cords and screaming because you're blowing off steam. What does that mean? You're creating movement as a defense mechanism so your body can calm down. What do you think the kids are doing? When they're screaming, right? What does it look like? A, a, here, here's something that, what is a baby that's arching their back doing? Increasing proprioceptive input to the brain. Why are they doing that? Because it's calming them down. It's pulling them out of stress. So a baby that's arching their back absolutely should probably see a chiropractor because they're trying to do chiropractic on themselves, quite honestly. So here's, here's this. Um, what does it mean in a practical sense? It means that if movement doesn't happen, the neurogenesis, the birth of new neurons that will create the circuitry of the brain is compromised at step one of the seven stages of neurodevelopment. Without proper sensory input, those neurons literally die. What is proper sensory input? Chiropractic care. Chiropractic care. Occupational therapy is good. PT is good. Exercise is good. Yoga is good. But nothing goes past that physiologic barrier like chiropractic care does. And the uh, input, sensory input that chiropractic can deliver is exponentially greater than those other things. So if you want the best bang for your buck, so to speak, if you want the greatest impact on neurogenesis and brain health, chiropractic care is for you. How does it all work? Here's a fun little diagram. The brain and the body are in constant communication. If something interferes with that, con that, that communication, right? The brain's sending impulses to the body, the body is then responding and vice versa. It's the cycle or loop. They're constantly communicating. Examples of that, if you're outside and it's hot, you sweat. You don't think about sweating, you might think about being hot, but you, you sweat. If you go for a run, your heart rate goes up. Why? Because you need to get more oxygen via blood to the rest of your body. So that, that happens. If you are out on a walk and you hear a dog bark and you think that it's very large and maybe close to you, your heart rate accelerates, your blood pressure changes, and the blood goes from your central organs out to your extremities because it needs to get your muscles ready to fire because you either fight or flight, right? That sympathetic response. So... The brain and body communicate via the spinal column. When this happens normally, we call this function. This is just normal function. This is natural, normal function. It should be easy and a byproduct of that is health. So if your system's functioning at its max capacity, that's happening with little effort, a little energy, naturally, that leads to health. That's where health comes from. Tension in the spine, which we talked about before, that tension in the spine represented on the X there will cause a change in the communication process between the brain and the body. We call that a subluxation. 
that then therefore makes a dysfunction leading to dis-ease, right? Kind of play on words about disease, but then it becomes ill health. Your health is compromised because foundationally there's a restriction. And what you can do and, and what sometimes happens is we look at ill health and the disease itself and we treat there. We give a medication to help regulate the, the mood or the behavior. But if we were to back up a little bit, so what happens is if we artificially increase health and make things seem to be a little bit easier? Nothing ultimately, because the dysfunction is still there. The subluxation is still there. The root cause of the problem is still there. So over time, that happens. Here's what else happens. When those things have to keep coming back over and over again, it just dives deeper and deeper and deeper layers into the nervous system and therefore becomes a lot harder to correct later on. So garbage in, garbage out. We know that saying, right? Uh, you are what you eat. You, you are how you move. The, nervous, the central nervous system is all about balance. The whole point of the central nervous system is to create balance. You should have a sympathetic response. I mean, thank God that we have the ability to assess and perceive threats and survive in situations, right? People's lives, quite honestly, have been saved countless times because of the sympathetic dominance. Either they've been able to save themselves or you hear stories of um, kids getting trapped under cars and moms being able to lift a car. Are you kidding me? Like tractors have a hard time lifting cars. And then with this sympathetic dominance, this adrenaline, um, there quite honestly is like superhuman strength that can, can develop from that. That can be a good thing, but we ain't supposed to live that way. I know that's not good grammar, but honestly, we are not supposed to live in that stuck stress state because it really influences and affects our whole neurology, our whole development. So here is just another little graphic. Sympathetic is all about protection. It's all about um, survival. It's all about stress response. Parasympathetic is, uh, is where we grow. And here's what you need to know is that you can't be in growth and protection at the same time. If you are, or your kid specifically is stuck in survival mode, they're not gonna grow and develop well. They may be able to adapt enough to hit their milestones, but they're not going to reach optimum level. And that's where we kind of, that's where we separate and pull apart from the pack as far as healthcare is concerned, because we're not just interested in your kids getting by, we wanna optimize and maximize their potential. Honestly, our heart of hearts is that we know that your child has been created by God for a purpose, on purpose, and has a specific calling. We want nothing more than to optimize and maximize their potential to fully step into that as healthy as they possibly can. That looks different for everybody, but we all have an optimal potential. And I don't think a lot of us are, are reaching it. I honestly think a lot of us are falling short because we have these tensions and, and neurologic things that are holding us back. I will say for myself, that's not the case because I get chiropractic care. For my family, that's not the case because they get chiropractic care. For hundreds and really thousands of families that come into our office, that's not the case. And I just shared a post the other day that said chiropractic kids shine a little bit brighter. And what I mean by that is the Cairo kids, if you survey the world and look at kids that are under chiropractic care versus kids that are not under chiropractic care, the rates of things like sensory issues, behavioral issues, colic, constipation, um, chronic ear infections, all of those diseases, that 54%, the kids that are under regular chiropractic care, they're not in that 54%. They're in the 48%. And I'd be honest to say, or I'd be, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see they're actually in the top 10% of the health, right? Are they making other good choices, diet, exercise, movement? Yes. But my family does not eat perfect. We do not exercise perfectly. We try and make good choices, more good choices than bad choices. But we are a healthier family because our system is working as efficiently as it possibly can. And then it's responding appropriately if something does come up. And what, I, what we need to understand is that we have allowed our society to redefine what normal is. It's normal for kids to get ear infections. It's normal for kids to have meltdowns. It's normal for kids to have sensory issues. It's normal for kids to bang their heads on the ground. It's normal for allergies. It's normal to get your tonsils out. It's normal to have to 
we can talk all day with all we can say this is normal. That's not normal. Normal is that we've been created to be healthy. Health is normal. So let's normalize normal and let's just start calling the other stuff common, right? It's common. Just because a lot of people have it doesn't make it normal. What makes it, what makes it normal is our bodies functioning the way that they are originally designed to function or maximizing their ability to do so. A bunch of people having the same thing, that just makes it common. So output will equal input. If bad information is coming into the system, bad information is going to go out. So the prefrontal cortex, I talked about how the prefrontal cortex can be influenced greatly by 20%. It can increase prefrontal cortex activity by 20%, one chiropractic adjustment. Now, add a whole bunch of chiropractic adjustments together in a care plan, and you see some pretty crazy stuff, which I shared with you some of the results that we've been able to get. The primary function of the prefrontal cortex is executive function. And here are, here's a list of things that it will do. Problem solving, delayed response or self-control, critical thinking, flexibility and task management, verbal fluency. So another thing that we see with a lot of kids that have, um, I don't know what to really call them anger issues, but they have um, mood or regulation issues. We also see a lot of speech concerns, a lot of speech is issues and, and problems. And like I said, we work with a lot of speech pathologists, but one of the reasons we have good rapport with a lot of speech and language pathologists is because they've reached out to us after they've worked with a kid for, let's say six months, kid starts Cairo, they've been on this trajectory of getting better and better and better. And then all of a sudden they hit, they, they start Cairo care and they hockey stick. And what I mean by that is there's this jump in progress that um, is almost unexplained to where the therapist often will ask the family, what has changed because they've just had massive breakthroughs. The parents share, well, we started chiropractic care. Next thing you know, the, chiro the, the speech and language th pathologist or therapist are calling us and they're saying, hey, what is it that you guys are doing because you're making our job easier? We don't replace them. We don't do their job. We're not even going to pretend to try and do their job. Um, we value them. We love referring to them. And all we want to do is help the body work more efficient so that the work that they're doing can be more effective. Altered movement patterns of the spine leads to a shift, um, to a shift toward a sympathetic dominance. That's stuck in stress. I already talked about that before. Info is redirected away from the prefrontal cortex and to the amygdala. That's the emotional center of the brain, which then therefore is the, a loss of rational thought. The amygdala is like the the emotion monger. That's what one of my mentors used to call it. It just controls emotions. And that's where when you're upset or angry or you get in an argument with somebody, um, you don't really rationalize through things, right? The next day you have a lot of apologies and, and a lot of conversations to be had on, I'm sorry, I didn't really mean that. And the truth is you probably didn't really mean it. You just let your emotions get the best of you because when the amygdala gets triggered, right? My teenage kids would be really happy that I just said triggered. But when the amygdala gets triggered, what ends up happening is that um, the prefrontal cortex gets inhibited. It's this teeter-totter. It's this balance. And so when you turn one off or turn one down, you end up turning the other one on or turning it up. So how do you know if a kiddo needs chiropractic care? Well, you don't just guess or assume. You, you make an appointment and you get a consultation where we do some postural assessments, some palpation, range of motion, neurologic evaluation. I don't know why I did one, two, three, three, and four. It should be five. So and the scans allow us to measure how their nervous system is really responding and adapting to the environment. That is something that we love because we, what we say is we don't guess, we test. What I mean by that is it's not just a matter of us feeling in and saying, yep, they need this, this, and this, that we can do that. We've done that before. Um, but now we actually put metrics to it. There's actual data that one, we can see exactly where their struggles are and how their nervous system is handling that stress. And two, we can monitor the progress. So that holds us accountable to where you see where they're at. You see their symptoms change. You see the out, out poor change but then we can also measure how their nervous system is really better adapting and responding. And so when we talk about some of those stressors before, when I had the list of slides of, you know, birth trauma and those types of things that came up, one of the things that I didn't say is that studies have shown that 75% of kids born without intervention, quote unquote, naturally, vaginally, 75% of those kids have when been assessed tension in their spine, specifically their upper cervical spine. 
Then you throw into the equation um, V backs and C sections and forceps and interventions and epidurals, and then that percentage just increases. And so knowing the impact that the tension on the spine has on the nervous system and three out of four kids are born with some various forms of, of tension, which quite honestly, if you just look at the population of society and see where are the kids sick, where is the dysfunction, those percentages, you know, they're not causative, but they certainly, there seems to be a correlation there, especially in contrast to kids that are under chiropractic care and have healthy functioning, optimally functioning nervous systems um, and are just generally healthier. They're on less prescription drugs. They're, um, they're not struggling with some of the same, same struggles or same diagnoses that, that what, what seems to be really common. Um, and I would even say the majority of kids now, 54% are struggling with. Um, with that, those statistics known and, and seeing those things, um, it kind of just really becomes a, a, an issue of why wouldn't you get your kid checked? Um, you don't really have a whole lot to lose by getting your kid checked. It's safe, it's simple. It's uh, not simple, but it's safe. It's effective. It's super, super gentle. That's what I meant when I was going to say simple. Um, it's gentle. The amount of pressure that we use with a chiropractic adjustment on a kiddo is about how you would test the firmness of a tomato or enough pressure to where your, finger, your fingernail bed might change a little bit of color. There's not a whole lot of popping, crunching, cracking, twisting, flipping. Um, I don't know. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of really awful YouTube videos and a lot of misinformation out there saying that what chiropractic does and what we need to know about our office. And one of the things that makes us unique is one, we're 75 to 80% pediatric. So the overwhelming majority of kiddos on any given day, 50 or 60 kiddos are going to be coming in and out of the store. And then their parents might also be under care as well. Um, and when you see kids um, or when kids are being seen, one of the most important things to know or, or to, to recognize is that kids are not just a smaller version of, of adults. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of chiropractors and I love chiropractic and I love chiropractors and I understand we have a lot of fruits and nuts that are hanging in our tree, right? It, there are people that have certainly not done our profession well. That's the case with every profession. I have some really good friends that are medical doctors and, and we have that conversation. And they're like, yeah, we got it in our profession too. Um, but if you're going to a chiropractor for your kid, go to one that specializes in kids. Okay. I, uh, if you're an adult and you want to go see a chiropractor, that's just what we classify as a general chiropractor, not specialized in pediatrics and hasn't taken the time to really dive deep into pediatrics. Um, go ahead. You're probably going to be good. Um, check the reviews, see, see what the ratings are, um, go on Google and Yelp and all those type, types of things. But if you're going to a pediatric chiropractor, ask around. Who's the most popular one? Go, go look at their, like stock them, stock me. Look at my Facebook, look at my Instagram, look at our Google, look at our website, ask around. Um, because our reputation is built on the results that we've gotten. We love those results. And the reason we get the results is because we are so laser focused on getting you and your family the answers that you want and deserve. Because I know you're watching this because you're, probably desperate. A lot of people that come into our office come in saying that like we're the last resort or they've tried everything else or they're at the end of their rope. Here's what we want to say. We're here to help in any way we possibly can. That's why we exist. So your next step, my kind of my challenge, really, it's not really a challenge. There's no hard sell on this. It's just a, hey, if you want us to help, there's a good chance we can probably help you. Your next best step, set up a time to chat with us. Okay call our office, ask about a VIP offer. I'm not putting this up, up on the website because I do feel like you still need to take that next step. We do have a VIP offer. You call, you mentioned this webinar, we'll give you that VIP deal um, or go to our website. Look, look around, see all the information that we've published and produced. Um, let us know how we can help you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. I love being able to do these webinars. Um, I tried to do it a little bit earlier on Facebook and my camera wouldn't go live on my, on my laptop. And so I just, just go ahead and record this. I'm gonna put it on our website. I don't know when you're gonna be watching this, but just know that we just wanna help as much as we possibly can. So if we can help you in, in any way, shape or form, please reach out to us. Um, hope is straight ahead and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks so much, bye.